Welcome back to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Blockade Issue 1, The Time to Strike. On the cover, three motorcycles speed through city streets towards the reader. The first is Max's saber cycle, driven by Rascal King, with Machina and Squire riding behind. The second is driven by Rider Typhon, with the Carl Swarm flying behind it. The third is a sleek motorcycle with glowing red headlights. Blue Samurai sits atop, with his hands in the air, as Brian manipulates it from afar. In the bottom corner, there is a silver embossed logo in bold letters. Blockade. We turn the page and our story begins. The smoke clearing from the ruins of Town Hall. Sirens wail loudly as firefighters struggle through the ruins, managing their way down through the debris towards where the police officer's body cams caught just the slightest glimpse of the hero Tyrannus. Bodies being dragged out of the rubble before we cut to the firefighters' body cams now live streaming onto a screen in a nearby van where two figures sit. The two videos play side by side, the struggle through the wreckage, and Alan's final moment as he seemingly shattered into an enormous ball of electricity. The two figures talk in quiet tones. The first one is a gruff male voice and says, You understand we'll have to handle them, correct? The other says, Yes, I understand. The first one says, And if they fight? The second one says, Do what you must. We then get a look at the front of the two figures, illuminated only by the flickering light of the computer screen. The female is Glacier, and she is stone-faced at the other one's suggestion. And the person she's talking to is City Councilman Franklin Lamont, underneath whom is a text box labeling him as the villain mutagen. He turns to her, looking at her, though she does not look back at him, and he says, And you'll stay out of our way? And we get two panels of her nodding. Like, very short, very small a nearly imperceptible nod. And then he says, Good. Then I don't think this footage ever made it to us, did it? We don't know what it caused the explosion, do we? And he presses the button, and the video, which is currently paused on Alan's face as it contorts in pain, goes black. And then we get a a mirroring of that same spread from earlier, from uh, the end of, uh, I believe, the end of the Faces issue. We see the, like, city divided into several sections as the mist rises up around it. And we see, like, cross sections of different heroes, notably the three of our teams. And then across the top is a speaker, box of a speaker that says, The mist around you is a pheromone to weaken the Asterons. The time is now. The revolution begins. Heroes, arise. And we're going to cut first to Max and Machina as that announcement ends. What do you do? How far are we away from City Hall? Probably been flying on the motorcycle for about a minute at this point. Like, this is, like, this is immediately after. So maybe 15 blocks. What's going on around us? Like, what do the streets look like? How are people reacting? It was pretty late when this happened. Like, it was a pretty late night when the mist started rising up around you all. So right now, as this announcement is going off and it's, Every speaker in the city, like speakers that aren't connected to the speaker systems of the city are also going off. People are like waking up and we see a lot of lights turning on. People in windows are like looking out windows and like leaning out. Not a lot of people are currently on the streets, no more than usual. In about 30 seconds, the streets will be flooded with people. But right now you should be okay. What about like the sky? Are there any of the Astron ships? I don't think any of them have had time to react to this yet. Um, Okay. They are all still, like, flying around the perimeter. From where you are, you can probably see a few of them, but you are in the, like, heart of the city. So lots of tall buildings, not a lot of skyline from where you are. I think upon hearing that, Max just presses the accelerator down harder and, uh, like, leans back to Amber and just says, tell me where we're going. I have no idea. Just we're drive. We're coming up to, like, a T-intersection. I just yell, left, right, left, right. Left. And I will slam left. Uh, what does that look like? Oh, I think we, we we skid and like the bike leans to the point like we're almost just rubbing the road before we pull out of it. Yes. And I think I'm just eyes to the sky looking for Astron ships. Cool. Do you have any interest in assessing the situation? Or I would like to. Mm-hmm. Cool. Go ahead. Start it off strong. So I think we get like a couple panels that like the panels, it's like three panels in a row, but we've crossed like three city blocks across these three very s- rapid panels, and I've just got eyes in the skies barely paying attention to the road. Awesome, I feel so safe. You should. <laughs> As you are driving kind of recklessly around corners, you go to make a pretty sharp turn, and I'm going to have you go ahead and roll to um, 
unleash your powers to not hit someone that's about to roll in. Okay. I'm going to roll that with Freak, which cool. as a beacon is my strongest stat. We still have one team to spend if you want to help somehow. Amber is going to like put her foot on top of Max's to help like slam on the brakes. <laughs> that sounds great. And you slam on the brakes just as another motorcycle cuts across your path. The Rider Typhon and Myriad, you two, I assume, have gotten on your bike and are just starting to head towards whatever you're heading towards. So tell me about like what happened in the past 30 seconds since that announcement started. Ryder is actually uh, motioned to Carl. Uh, we were actually just we were just riding, trying to figure out us maybe if uh, we could find a source. Um, we were actually riding right before the announcement. We were riding towards the large, smoky crater that is the town hall uh, because it's clearly visible from quite a distance away. So we were just we were riding towards that to see if there was any way we could help whatever happened there. Great. So you whip around a corner to head towards City Hall, and there's this motorcycle heading away from City Hall. The two of you slam on your brakes, nearly collide. And I do think that Rascal King's motorcycle kind of goes skidding. So um, I'm going to say that Matt Rascal can go ahead and roll to take a powerful blow for me. <laughs> That's not good. Big roll. Okay, I, I think I'm going to struggle past the pain and mark two conditions. Great. What are you marking? Go into this, uh, I'm deciding that now. Uh, okay, so I think um, I lose control of the bike. And is it cool if just I'm tossed from the bike? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I want to like stand up from this with just road rash to hell. Uh, and I think I am going to be insecure and uh, angry. I mean, that makes sense, the insecure part at least. Because as you stand up, you are now eye to eye with two heroes you're probably pretty familiar with. Ryder Typhon and Carl. What were you doing? Kid, you almost got us all... Well, we're heroes. You really didn't get us killed. Hey, Carl, you okay? Yeah. Good, 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 good. Now, where are you two off to in such a hurry? Can we get a panel of, like, Amber has slid forward to take Max's seat and has, like, spun around to come back? Yep, absolutely. I like that. Maybe uh, you pull up in the panel, but, like, right beside Max, and Max is just, like, open mouth, wide-eyed staring at uh, Ryder, like, trying to make words, but it's not working. Also, question. What does Carl look like? How, how I guess, bizarre does he look? Is it obvious that he's insects? Yeah, let's go ahead and take that second. Uh, let's start with Carl. Um, I want everyone to introduce yourself and what your character looks like as you interact, inter interact, as you meet the other team for the first time. Okay, I'll get, I guess I'll start with Carl then. Um, you see a man-like shape right now with a big grin on his face and like if you look closely you can see that he's actually made of a bunch of insects all crawling across each other 90 percent of the insects are just like nondescript brown and wasps like wasp like insects that all have wings but um from like a distance it, it just seems like a man with a weird skin condition or something Excellent. Uh, and Ryder, what do you look like? Ryder's standing there in a medieval-esque armor that is in that is pretty sleek on his body, and he is sans helmet. He's got long. He's got kind of a a, a longer cut of hair that is all parted to the left. It's like actually just hanging to the left there, and he's been riding helmetless here. But the armor is a blue, a dark blue with gold trim that covers his body from head to toe or from shoulder to toe. And excellent. Uh, on the page where we're describing what Ryder looks like, we do get like a little like speech bubble from a like super, super over the top cartoon Lighthammer that's like, isn't he so dreamy? And, like Lighthammer is like basically an emoji. I love it. <laughs> I just had to toss that in there. Max. Besides being covered in uh, road rash, what do you look like? Max is in. Um, it's as if someone looked up on YouTube how to make a how to sew a squirrel costume, and then not squirrel, sorry, a raccoon costume, and then just did it badly. I guess it's a little bit better now because of um, seamstress. Is that her name? Yep, it's a little more polished now because of her. Yeah, but the the overall concept is still pretty bad. Uh, and he has like a uh, domino mask and then a plastic uh, like golden crown 
And I think probably at, on his shoulder at this point is uh, Squire, who is a raccoon, who is also wearing a domino mask, a little red domino mask. Excellent. And uh, Makina, what do you look like in costume? So her costume is a bunch of like white, a white nylon suit with a bunch of lines on it that are kind of like in a circuitry pattern. Um, and they, they light up. I think they're just kind of, they're not on right now. And she's, she's pretty small with a short white hair that just sticks up like it's been electrified. And like, yeah, she's also in costume and she's got like a mask on her face, just kind of around the eyes. I also don't think she's wearing a helmet right now. (laughs) Max is definitely Um, not wearing a helmet. We've been preoccupied. We just see the panel of everyone kind of like staring, Max's open mouth gaping. Amber is kind of like adjusting as she pulls up next to Max. Ryder is berating and Carl's just there to have fun. What do y'all want to do from here? I think Carl looks over at Felix and goes, do you know these people? Not particularly, no. Um, where were oh. you two headed? Um, he's going to oh. look over at uh, Amber. <clears throat> Carl just uh, bolts off into a nearby store. We were figuring that out. Okay, I guess a better question is, where are you coming from? I think we get a panel where Amber just kind of like looks back at the smoking remains of City Hall. Oh. I think yeah. Max, like, noticing what's going on, like, steps up to Ryder. It's like, no, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of me. I'm the Rascal King. <laughs> and um, when you bring up your superhero name to someone important, and Ryder is definitely important, don't worry, it's with the superior, so I'll fail it. Hey! Um, on a hit, they've heard of you. Say which of your exploits they've heard about you. I'm not going to do the which label they think applies. I'm just going to tell you which exploits you've definitely heard. Amber, help me out here. What's the best one? What have we done that's cool? Oh, man. I guess that that would have been heard of. I, I'm also trying to think in terms of a positive light, because I guess our biggest exploit was uh, accidentally freeing all of those villains. Yeah, I'm going to go with just the movie theater thing. Oh, yeah. The movie theater is a good one. Because, like, we look good out of that. Yeah. good I think that was, that was one of the, the few where we looked good. Uh, on a 7 to 9, the GM will tell you something else they've heard. Yeah, Ryder has definitely, without a doubt, heard about the whole you guys accidentally helped half the MMM escape. And I think I hold out my uh, my hand for a handshake, and my other hand is definitely going into my pocket to get my phone because I'm about to ask for a selfie. At this point, you hear behind you, Hi, I'm Carl, and um, I offer uh, Amber um, a jar of mayonnaise with a novelty straw in it. The mayonnaise I... again, Carl? I think we get a panel where, like, she just kind of looks at Carl with just this totally bewildered expression on her face, like, very confused, like, contrasting with, you can totally see that her eyes are red, she's been crying, and she's just looking at Carl like, wait, 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 hold up, are you bees? I'm just Carl, but I thought it might be sunny, and whenever I meet new friends, I should offer them sunscreen so here (laughs) carl we've already talked about this mayonnaise isn't oh god it's nighttime anyways uh, max the max has had his hand out for this handshake the entire time (laughs) uh the writer (laughs) looks down at, at max's at the rascal king hand and goes i know exactly who you are you guys let the MM f- MMM free. Not on purpose. <sighs> Left is a strong word. Uh huh. So I guess that the smoke has to do something with something you've done. Technically, not us. Uh, no, we, we'll take credit for that. It's a good thing. Is it? Where is the soldier-looking guy? He's normally with you, at least in the footage. I think Max is just staring at his shoes at this point. Yeah, Amber's definitely, like, got some tears welling up right now. And the second that happens, as we get, like, the awkward silence, before anyone else can break it, there's a bright, bright red flash in the sky. Over kind of close-ish to where City Hall was, not super, super far from it, probably, like, six or seven blocks from it, roughly where the high school is. Or looks over at Amber and goes... I told you it would be sunny. And with that, we're going to cut out of this scene. 
And we're going to cut over to uh, Al and Brian. Al and Brian, uh, the mist has just started going off in the sky. And the custodian has, in the confusion, snuck away. This is like minutes after your uh, escape from the school. So what happened? What are you doing? I would probably like to look at Asimov and just kind of like gesture to like ask if we're going to keep running after the dude. Uh, looks like some more important things might be going on now. I'm going to kind of, I feel like there should just, just like a shrug and like a conceding, like, I guess, you know, like, I guess there's orange smoke coming out of everything. What is your next move? What do you want to do? Orange smoke is coming out of like the fire hydrants, right? Yep. I'm going to walk up to one and like, see if I can open it. So like to open it, I'm going to see if like, I can just open a portal like inside of the fire hydrant and just see if I can see inside of it, you know? Can things go through your yes. portals? Cool, I People... thought so. Yeah, um, everything can. <laughs> yeah, so as you open it, um, the orange mist just kind of like bursts through the um, portal. It's kind of like seeping out uh, through like the cracks in the fire hydrant, but you just gave it essentially a straight fire shot out. And <laughs> it comes out in, like, almost like a spurt of water. Like, it's that concentrated. Think, like, opening, like, a pot of things that have been boiling. Can I make and, like, a suggestion for how those panels looked? Yeah, please. Because Al canonically opens portals by, like, slicing the air. So I like this, like, you bringing out your katana, slicing a portal, and then it just rips open. You just get blasted in the face with this jet of this steam. <laughs> That's what I was imagining, and then kind of just sitting on my ass, like, oh, shit. <laughs> but you will know, based on the way the steam hit you, that it's not smoke, it is steam. Um, it, like, doesn't burn your lungs to, like, inhale it. And if you want to go ahead and assess the situation, you can, like, look in to see things inside the portal that you just cut open. Okay. Um, because it's kind of a... I'm not going to look directly into it, because, like, I feel like this gas could be gaseous, you know? That's totally fair. All right, on a 10 plus, you can ask two. What here is in the greatest danger? Uh, yeah, so as you're looking in this, um, there's a red flash from above you, and what looks like a pod of some sort just got launched from an Asteron spaceship and directly into a, like, courtyard area, courtyard, like, almost shopping center kind of area, about a block away from you. So probably whatever you asked what is in the greatest danger. Mm-hmm. Probably anything near that. If what the uh, little speech bubble um, announced it is to be believed. Okay. I guess my next question is going to be how could we best end this quickly? But like seeing this bright flash, do does do Alan Asimov know what the. Uh... I gotta look up their names or I'm gonna not say it properly. Asteron. Asteron. There's no way we couldn't know. Yeah. It's been so, all over the news. The Asterons are the alien race that have been um, blockading and like... So yeah, you know who they are. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure because like... Yeah. So yeah, seeing as there's like that going on, I'm gonna ask how can I end this quickly? But like, I'm a little... I'm more concerned about that than the orange dust the orange steam yeah so i think the most likely way to end this quickly would be to get the city to surrender somehow you're not super far from the uh city council like the town hall the city council's chambers so you might be able to talk to the city councilman you don't know yet that they are that that building was destroyed but you might be able to reach out to them and try to go get ask them to like surrender there's also the world in which you could hypothetically try to fight back and, like, fight these Asterons and maybe try to win if this mist is actually going to stop them. So those are the two worlds in which this ends quickly. I don't know that there's another option right now. The city kind of just declared war on them. Okay, I think I would... I think, like, I'm going to look at XP, point at the bright flash, and, like, say, Asimov, I think, I think we need to go check out the giant orange thing in the sky. Uh, just one problem. This robot can't the, it can't move out of range of its activation point. So, um, if you could just go there, I'll meet you. 
why don't you have better robots? <laughs> I have a better one. This is not this one. This is what I leave in school. All right, I'll meet you there. Cool. So are you going to head over towards the um, pod that just landed in the courtyard nearby? Yes. Solid. I want to cut over to Brian in his room or wherever he does his work out of. And by cut to, I mean cut to his hands or whatever we're going to see of him this time. Go ahead and send your robot over. Right. So um, this robot is already out there somewhere in the city. He's just switching from one to another. So what does this new robot look like? It's this sleek looking robot. A lot of curves as opposed to the very blocky one from before. And it rises out of a dumpster and steps out on two legs and transforms. It kind of lowers itself down sideways and its kneecaps or one of its kneecaps opens up and a rubber wheel comes out and uh, turns into a motorcycle. Fantastic. So, and you're heading from where you are towards the place where the pod just crashed? Right. Cool. I want to cut back to our bigger group. I want to cut back to Myriad, Machina, Rascal King, and Ryder. So, we just got a great witty one-liner. And what are we doing now, folks? I feel like we should get a panel of, like, the red streak of the pod. With, and then, like, a shot of, like, all of us looking at it. And I feel like Amber's just going to be like, Ryder, right? You asked where we're going? We got to get to that. I agree. And as he says that, his the um, you actually see the panel where he says that his helmet is half phased onto his head. So it started phasing from the back end uh, and it's phasing forward till it closes its, till it closes around his head. And then, then I guess the next shot would be all of us getting on the motorcycles. Okay, as people are getting on the motorcycles, Max, like, hold on, hold on one sec. She's almost here. And I think we get a shot down the like. Uh, road of uh, Squire running as fast as she can. She's like holding something fairly large in her mouth. She's like, she had to get something from the house. And I'm going to jump on my bike and then uh, Squire jumps on the uh, bike. Like in the, I think Squire's riding the sidecar, right? Or was Amber in the sidecar? Um, Amber's on the back, Squire's in the cool. sidecar. Yeah, Squire's in the sidecar. And I feel uh, like Amber has like dutifully like scooted back like, okay, Max, Max can drive this. It's his bike. <laughs> And uh, I think once Squire's in the sidecar, um, she kind of like ducks down so she's out of the panel. And then when she pops back up, she's wearing like a smaller replica rider helmet. Amazing. And then as Max like kicks, uh, starts the bike, yells over to Ryder, I need you to sign this later. We'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, Ryder, right before he starts the bike, he, he turns and whispers, not whispers, but calmly says to Carl, hey, can you like set a couple of you in their bike? I want to be sure that we I can phase all four of us if needed. Sure. And um, you see a small part of coral detach, and it morphs into a into the shape of um of a cat, and go sit in the, in the sidecar. And I whisper to Felix, I think that car is only for cats. I think we get an adorable scene where like the squire kind of looks at this coral cat and then scoots over a few a little bit. Excellent. And then we see the two motorcycles like take off down the road. As you pass an alley, the uh, uh, Asimov motorcycle pulls out next to you. And so it's the three motorcycles just taking up the whole street, flying like side by side down the road towards where this pod was. And we're going to cut back to... Can I get one more panel at the end of that Please. scene? Please. I'd like to get a panel, or I guess a couple panels. The first panel is the next panel is um, inside the shaded room of the intern's office. I think the intern actually is like the only intern with their own office at this point. Oh, she absolutely has to have her own office. <laughs> and then we get trouble. <laughs> and then we get like her looking at her phone, and it's a snap from uh, Max. That's like a picture of. From Max's bike, the other two bikes, and it just says, hashtag team up, hashtag save the city. And in the background of that, we do get a, uh, like, we see, like, bodies rushing through the back of the um, interns, like, the window behind the intern. Um, but the intern has dutifully not left the desk. I love the intern. I also love the intern. One of my favorite minor characters. For those of you who are not in the know, there's an intern literally just dedicated now to making sure that Max doesn't accidentally out the entire Saber organization 
on social media because Max is a very social media driven character. The last thing we actually see of this panel of this page is the three bikes taking off. We get like a, a shot from behind of the three bikes rushing down the road and flying above. We do see the pterodactyl. So we cut over to Blue Samurai. Uh, Blue Samurai, you've just arrived in the like parking lot of this shopping center where uh, this pod has crash landed, uprooting some cars, flipping some cars over. There's like smoke billowing out from it and like from underneath it. And it's all lit up by this like kind of eerie red light. Uh, what do you want to do? I would like to look around, kind of like see like what's ca- what's casting the light. If I can figure, if I can tell, you know. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. It's the uh, th- it, this is some sort of escape pod or like messenger pod or something. It looks like it didn't have any landing gear. It just had like hover pads on the bottom of it. So like they slowed the landing, but now they're still just like glowing red underneath. And most of this pod just is is in and of itself glowing. There's no like fire or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna. Are there windows or anything? Not visible. They may be like transparent, so, so like are transparent from one to side and opaque from the other. But uh, you can't see inside of it. No. Okay, so I'm going to assume that because I can't see, they can't see. You know, the classic blunder, and uh, teleport into somewhere where I'm hidden, like a tree or like behind a built, like a wall or even on top of the thing, just somewhere where I presumably can't be seen. Cool. Do you go ahead and pick where you want to end up? What shape is this thing? Sorry, I don't know if you mentioned it. Uh, no, I haven't really. It's um, it kind of looks like an old school computer mouse. Okay. Um, so it's like flat on the bottom and domey, um, uh, but with like a like slight more incline on the front than on the back. I'm gonna teleport into like a nearby tree and then just kind of sit and like dim as much as the glowiness that I give off as possible because while it's bright red. I still emit some light and I don't want to be seen. So I'm going to just like crouch down real low and just keep an eye on this thing because it just came from outer space. <laughs> we haven't gotten a visual introduction for Al in this issue yet. Do you want to do it here? Yeah, oh, sh- sure. Let's do that. So should I do it a blue samurai or a, or a Al or both? Uh, blue uh, samurai since you're in costume. Okay, so blue samurai currently is in just like a skin tight all black jumpsuit with two blue neon stripes running up the side and the neon can either dim or brighten at the uh depending on how much pressure i exert like mentally and the only thing in my face that's shown is just my eyes and like my eyebrows the rest is covered in the same black like morph suit basically (laughs) awesome yeah so we get you jumping into the tree from the tree you've got a pretty good clear picture of uh the pod whatever it is and it looks like there are more of these getting launched at other points in the city. There's uh, one that looks like it's coming from over by, like, the lake and the park. There's one over by, uh, like, North Moon Harbor, so, like, near Moon Harbor University. And the streets are quickly being lit up with, like, sirens and police cars driving through. And also, like, things you would recognize as, like, superhero, like, the uh, vehicles. Uh, go ahead and tell me any superhero vehicle you see. Like, just, like, what is one that you recognize? You can make up a superhero for this if you want, or you can pick someone that already exists in the universe. My father is a superhero, so maybe I see him driving, like, recklessly towards one of the spaceship, one of the landing asteroids. Perfect. I love that. Uh, what does he drive? Like, what's his uh, vehicle look like? It's a... a... Vehicle, or is it, like, a minivan? It's It's a bicycle. He's pretty frugal. He's a pretty frugal guy. I love that. Yeah, he's just on a little bicycle pedaling away. And, like, he's pr- he's a pretty powerful guy, but, like, gotta save money, you know? Absolutely. Uh, and as you watch him, like, turn a corner, about two blocks away from that, you see three motorcycles, like, turn and whip onto the street straight towards you. Could we get, like, a mini scene with these motorcycles since we didn't really get to react to this third bike coming up? Yeah, go ahead. XP, how how robotic does this motorcycle look? Does it look, I guess, different than a regular motorcycle? From the outside, you wouldn't tell until you hear a voice come out of it. Okay. Uh, you just see a normal looking uh, motorcycle with no rider. I think Amber's going to try to hop onto that. Uh, excellent. Um... I love our team. I love, <laughs> I love like, what? A bike with no rider? Yeah, I'm going to ride that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say 
you can do that pretty easily unless Asimov doesn't want you to, in which case you're going to have to roll to uh, unleash your powers. I think Brian's going to be pretty surprised and you're going to hear the voice of a little kid coming through the speaker. Uh, hey, this bike's not for you. Once Amber's hands go on the handle, we start to see some um, some speech bubbles in binary with the translation. And is this going to be like, oh, wait, you can talk? Hold up. Who is this? This is Asimov. I'm sure you've heard of me. Amber has not heard of you. I think Max oh. and the like close by motorcycle goes, oh, I've heard of him. He's pretty cool. I think he's a robot. Are you a robot? Max? You're the... Uh, is, is, oh, I mean, yes. Carl Cat goes, I think that's a motorcycle. Uh, when we get to um, the Max moment, uh, I think we cut over to Brian and open on Brian's phone is... The ins- like one of the Instagram posts talking about how like Max is definitely the rascal king and like the picture of his backpack. So like Max's secret identity is all but gone. Uh, yeah, and, and also that, I would like, know the voice instantly because he's the loud mouth that lives above me. <laughs> I think like at hearing his name, Max gets this like look of like s- complete shock, and then the oh yeah, and then we're gonna cut back to uh, Amber on the bike. I think she's gonna ask like. What what are you here for? I'm here for a friend, and you're not it. Where's this friend? I'm sure he's coming. I would like to send a text to Asimov and be like, dude, where are you? There's there's stuff going down. Dude, where are you? I'm at the asteroid. It's like a weird spaceship. It's eggy. As you say it looks eggy as you shoot that text, uh, you hear this like hideous cracking sound. And you look up. The asteroid you mentioned earlier is starting to just, like, shake. And you can see just, like, splinter lines running across it. And then a long, probably 20-yard long claw just bursts from the front of it. This claw, it's got three digits. Um, they're long, red, and they are spinning individually. Like, each, each unit is in and of itself spinning. And it kind of reaches forward and digs its spinning claws into the pavement, not far from where you are currently in the tree. You all are close enough that you can see this happen now as the asteroid starts to hatch. I'm going to say, Ryder and Carl, you're kind of the most put together of the groups. So uh, I'm going to let you have the first like move. What would you like to do? Carl looks quizzically at, um, at Felix and goes, friend? Okay, so we come to a stop, get off the bike. I look at Carl and go, probably not. And at that point, my armor was very sleek beforehand, and it like finalizes out the shoulder pads. The rest of the armor kind of appears over top of me, including the cape, uh, which is now, instead of actually being a cape, is more like a um, uh, a duster, I guess. Can we get a nice silhouette panel with the cape slash duster? Because I want to turn to Squire after that panel and go, Okay, we got to get capes. Perfect. So we have that panel, and then uh, we have Ryder standing there in the duster. Uh, Ryder, what do you want to do? Is the Has the egg hatched fully yet, or is it still just cracking? We have one claw extended out of the front, and that's it right now. And the rest of it's, like, cracking. I think Ryder's been doing research on the alien, on the aliens, so I'm going to say he's just going to, assuming that they are going to attack he is going to open up and leap in towards the alien and just basically put a mighty blow directly on the shell trying to possibly crush it if he can solid go ahead and roll to directly engage a threat all right on a seven and nine you can choose one i am going to create an opportunity for my allies excellent so Carl's probably the closest one right now. Carl, you see uh, Ryder leap into action. Uh, what would you like to do with that? Carl's going to channel the amulet and charge up his burn. We have not yet established teams, so let's take a second um, while we're rolling that. Who is our leader right now? Probably Ryder. And he just went all in. Yeah, Ryder's one of the few people Max would be looking to as a leader. It'd probably be Machina or Ryder to Max's eyes. Cool. Ryder, do you have influence over every member of the team? 
I don't believe I do. No, I don't have okay. influence well, over the rest of the other of two them. teams. Yeah. You have influence over Max. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is your purpose in the fight? Yeah, to defeat the threat. Does anyone have a different purpose in the fight? I do. What's your purpose, Max? I want Ryder to think I'm cool. <laughs> Perfect. So we're at two team right now. Sorry. Um, okay. Damn it. Does anyone mistrust the leader of the team? I wouldn't say yeah. mistrust, but I definitely don't know anybody that well, except for Asimov. Yeah, yeah I like sense. not mistrust, just don't have an opinion yet. Cool. But like, also, I know Amber's like heard of Ryder, so she's probably like, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Spectacular. So I don't think that counts as removing a team. I think we're still at two. Okay. Um, do we think we're ill-prepared or off-balance? No, I, I don't think. Yeah, Sorry. I think Cataclysm Crew is not off balance since we kind of knew that the pheromones were coming and we were definitely prepared for this. I would say that the writer and Carl went out looking for something, uh, not sure what they were going to run into, but looking for something so they were prepared. I think Brian and Albert are both a bit confused right now. I would say confused, but I, I would think we'd still be kind of prepared because we just had a fight with the custodian so like we're still in fight mode you know uh, i think that's fair so right now we are at two team all right and gil you just rolled a 10 to charge your burn while you are channeling the amulet a tentacle looking thing uh kind of more like an antenna than a tentacle is going to burst out from the egg it's significantly smaller than the leg is than the claw is roughly the size like the width of like a basketball Though it's, like, long and wiry. And it's going to grip onto your chest, like, suction style, like a elephant's trunk kind of, uh, Kaido. And it's going to just fling you over the back of the egg. So, like, fling you over top of it. And I want you to go ahead and roll to take a powerful blow for me. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Seeing this, would I be able to put a portal to... Throw a portal to catch him and then just deposit him safely on the ground? Yeah, uh, if you want to go ahead and roll to defend really fast, you can do that. So that's an 8. So on a 7 or 9, um, you uh, keep them safe and choose ones. You can add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. But it does cost you expose yourself to danger or escalate, escalate the situation. I assume I'd expose myself to danger, because I assume I hadn't been seen until just now. But now I've definitely been seen. And I would also like to take influence over Ryder. Cool. So yeah, Ryder, you go flying. Um, and then, Rocky, tell me what that looks like as Ryder is like, flying through the air. So, yeah, so I just, I jump out of the tree so I'm not in, like, shitty uh, bush, you know? And I'll just cut a portal in front of me and then, like, prepare my arms to catch. And I assume Ryder would just go flying into the portal and then into my arms. Perfect. As but Ryder goes through the portal, he's actually going to phase through uh, Al and land on his feet behind him. And say, and then say something to the effect of, "Thanks for the portal. I wasn't sure where I was going with that." Carl, you just charged your brain. What would you like to do with that now that it's charged? So you saw your friend go like launching towards this egg. Carl, go ahead and describe what the charge looks like, and then what you want to do with it now that you've got this opportunity to do something. Carl is um, it's just a giant woof of flame going up, and Carl bursts into flame. And as that happens, um, Carl Cat in the sidecar, there's like a mini poof, a small flame going on. And then uh, I'm going to try to uh, burn the monster with a uh, fire. And Squire is just backing up away from the fire cat as far as she can. Flawless. So you're using overcharge. What are you using for your burn there? Uh, it's a reality storm. Cool. Go ahead and reality storm it up. So that's plus freak, right? I'm going to spend both of my burns to do that, so there's no collateral damage. Cool. Uh, so what does that look like? Tell me how this reality storm takes place. Carl's reality storms are always like um, just a giant flamethrower thing, usually. So it's just a massive burst of flame that envelops the, uh, the egg monster. It, like, bursts through, and you can see the, like, claw, like, retract as the fire hits it, and the claw, like, kind of, like, almost seeks shelter in the egg, and the egg is just surrounded by this, like, cocoon of flame. 
I think that's going to last for a second before we see anything else happen. So uh, Amber, Asimov, Rascal King, you all have officially like made an entrance now. So if you want to like get set to do anything else, you have the opportunity. So the pod is currently on fire. It's surrounded by fire. Whether or not it caught is a different story, but it is definitely like surrounded by a wall of flame, essentially. Did did Ryder's punch to it do anything? Oh, yeah. You definitely sent more cracks up it. Like, it looks like you just like you slammed into it pretty hard. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. So like how how high up are the flames and how how tall is this pod? Just trying to get an idea of where this crack is pod is about 10 feet tall the flames are probably about a foot around in any direction so about 11 feet tall and probably about eight feet wide the flames are 11 feet tall yeah damn yeah i don't think amber is going to do anything with the firewall wow it's wild you think firewalls would be something that amber would love (laughs) call traceless (laughs) (laughs) i'm really gonna need you to get off of me Ma'am. Fine. Okay. Amber's gonna like jump off. Okay, I I transform into a robot. Thanks yeah. for the ride. Noticing that the bike has turned into a robot, I'm gonna just teleport next to it and be like, Asimov, is that you? Hello, friend. How many robots do you have? They're all over the city. That's uh good to know, and I'm gonna just kind of scratch my head head kind of awkwardly, like, oh, what have I done in front of these robots? As that happens, we see the, like, egg kind of shudder and just, like, literally just shake the flames off. So the flames just kind of, like, burst out. They dissipate pretty quickly, so there's no real collateral damage there. And then we see the egg essentially crack all the way open. And a second one of those claws kind of bursts out the front. And then the two claws reach forward and just pull the front of the egg apart and, like, pull the egg off the creature. And the creature pulls itself upright. creature stands at about 12 feet tall. It has four back legs and then the two front claw legs, which are arms with, like, claws on the end. It is stark white with blood-red spikes running along its back. The back legs are kind of spider-leggy, and it's a got a segmented body, kind of like a spider or an ant. Except the front face is almost reptilian, almost like a crocodile. Its eyes are made of a black fabric or black material that I think most of us would recognize. It's the uh, same material as the spaceships. Uh, that like black fleshy look. Oh god, is that those black eyes in the panels? Uh, I hate it. And then it's got two flexible antenna on its head, which look pretty similar to an elephant's trunk. And it shakes out of the shell and lets out this massive roar. And then its eyes turn and all four of its eyes focus directly on the group of you. Can we get a panel of Amber and Max looking at each other just like with that recognition of like, oh shit. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Hugh and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator On Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. They can be found at T. Huth Playwright on Twitter or T.P. Huth 94 on Instagram. This issue was GM by T. Huth. Asimov is played by EXPHP. You probably won't find him at It's EXPHP on Twitter, but it's worth a try. Blue Samurai is played by William Hendry. You can find him on Twitter at RockoutWill321 or on Steam as Cypress underscore Gronum. Carl is played by Simon Meskins. You can find him on Twitter as at Gilberecki. Machina is played by Elliot Peterson. She can be found at Elliot Yelin on Instagram. Rascal King is played by me, Anthony Sheets. Ryder Typhon is played by Kaido Kane. Kaido is a Twitch personality and loves the three mischievous cats. You can find them at The Versian on Twitter and as Kaido Kane on Twitch.tv. The music for this issue is Curse of the Scarab by Kevin McLeod. The license and a link to his website can be found in the show notes. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties.
She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or on Patreon at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes and recommending it to friends. Word of mouth is really the best way for us to bring these stories to more people. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.